Yesterday, we collected data for our conservation momentum lab. We collided two objects together. They stuck together. We ultimately wanted to see if the momentum was conserved between what it initially was when one cart was moving and what it finally was when both carts were moving after the collision. We collected data for that. We emailed it to ourselves. Now we've got to do something with that data. Today, I'm going to show you how to plot some graphs to get VI and VF for each of the trials, and then what to do with VI and VF for each of the trials. So what I'd like you to do first, guys, is everybody go into your Google Classroom, go into Physics 30 Period 2, because that's what class you're in, and click on Conservation of Momentum Lab. That's the only thing that should appear right there, right now, because that's the only lab that we've done up until this point. You should see a page that looks like this when you've clicked on that. I want you to create, right now, a document. So click on Create, and then scroll down to Document. That's going to be the document that you hand in to me, that you submit to me. Now, right now, that's going to be a blank document, so obviously you're not going to turn it in yet. But when, uh, when it comes time to, uh, to do something with our data, this is where we're essentially going to put it, so that we can hand it in and have it be marked. What I'd like you to do right now, click on that document that's just been created. You know that you're going to do a whole bunch of things for this. The problem, the variables, the procedure, all kinds of different stuff for this. Right now, I want to focus on just the data. So I'm going to hit enter a couple times. I'm going to type data. I'm going to enter the values of the two masses that I got yesterday, which maybe are, uh, I'm just going to make them up. 0 0.356 kilograms. And maybe the second value of mass was uh, 0 0.452 kilograms. Type in the value of both masses that you got. If you're not sure what those are at this moment, that's OK. You can always do that later. Next thing I want you to do is create a table. That table is going to be your VI and VF table. To do that, you're going to go insert, scroll down here to table, and then you're going to make it two columns by however many rows. I don't know how many trials you did. If it's six trials, you want to have six rows. If you have 10 trials, you want to have 10 rows. Now, your columns are going to be labeled initial velocity of car one in meters per second and final velocity of both cars. Let's type velocity correctly, though. And that's also going to be in meters per second. Now, once I actually get the values for VI and VF, which I've got a little ways to go before I have those values, this is where I'm going to put them, in my data table in my lab. Now it's time to do something with our data so that we can get these values. Now, I'm going to go back into my email, my student email, which is where you should have your data. If you weren't here yesterday or your data didn't work out very good, then you're going to have sample data posted in the classroom. If we go back to the classroom here, Conservation Momentum Lab, you can see underneath here there's a link to the sample data. You're going to go through pretty much the same process if you use the sample data as you are if you use the email data. But I'm going to show it to you through the email data. Okay? So let's go back. Let's go back to my inbox. I'm going to use Vlad's data from yesterday because it worked out really good. I'm going to click on it. I don't know why that's all blue. There it is. That's better. I'm going to scroll down here. And you may have to scroll way down the page. Okay, for some of you, it may look like pretty much a blank page. If you scroll way down the page, you're going to see all of these data trials here. It's going to give me the option of saving to drive. Uh, this is trial one. This is run two. This is run three. This is run four. Okay, I'm going to try run three. Now, you're going to go through this process with every trial, but we're only going to do it with one right now. I'm going to pick run three. I'm going to click on this little button here that says Save to Drive. Now, I'm going to save that. That automatically saves it, by the way, to my drive. But I want to save it in a place, or I want to move it to a place where I'll be able to find it. So it saved it to the default directory in my Google Drive right now. 
I want to move it to a folder that I've named AAAAA data. You may want to move it to your Google Classroom folder. I don't care where you put it as long as you can find that data. As long as it's in a folder that you'll be able to find it. I'm going to move it in here into my AAA folder. I could do the same thing with, with Run4 as well. Move it in there. Again, I'm going to do the same thing with all of my trials. I'm just not going to do them all right now because I don't want to take the time to do that. We'll focus on one of them, and then you'll just repeat that process later on for all the rest of your trials. Now I'm going to go back to my classroom. Now I want to create another document, actually a spreadsheet this time. This is where we're going to import our data. We're going to take the data that we just saved to Google Drive that was in our email, and now we're going to put it into a spreadsheet so that we can plot a graph and determine what the values of VI and VF were for that trial. So you're going to click Create Spreadsheet, and this is what pops up. Let's click on that spreadsheet, and you can see that when I do, it's a blank spreadsheet. It's completely blank, nothing in it. I'm going to rename it. Remember, I'm going to have to do this for all of my trials. If you have 10 trials, you're going to have 10 spreadsheets named the same thing, because that's what Google Sheets will do, is name them all the same thing. I want to rename it, I think that was trial three. So I'm going to rename it Conservation Momentum Lab Student Dickey Trial Three. Okay. And now I'm going to import the data that I just saved to my Google Drive. So I'm going to go File. I'm going to go Import. So I'm going to click on the folder that I saved my data in. Now you see a few trials there because I did this in the last class as well. I'm going to open up Trial 3 or Run 3. Select it. Now be careful here. You don't want to just create a new spreadsheet. You want to append rows to current sheet. If you don't select that option, then it's going to put all of the columns together in one. We don't want that. We want all the columns in separate columns. Okay, we don't want all the data in one column. We want data in separate columns. So click append rows to current sheet. Click the word import. And this is what pops up. Now this is a whole bunch of data that I don't even need. Not only did the motion sensor collect more data than you need, but your iPhone actually collected data including sound level and sound intensity at the same time. We don't need all of that stuff. So to tidy it up, I'm going to highlight all those columns and delete them. Now I've got the two columns that I want. I'm going to scroll down here a little bit. You can see when I do that, sometimes it collects more data for one column than another for whatever reason. That's not a big deal, but let's just even it out. So I've got, if I've got more trials in my X column than I do my Y column, let's just delete the rest of them from the X so that it's the same number of trials for X and for Y. Now I'm going to plot a graph. To plot that graph, and the instructions for this, by the way, are on one of those handouts that I gave you. I'm going to highlight the data. I'm going to insert a chart. But I don't want a bar graph here. I want a scatter plot. So I'm going to click on this little charts button here, click on scatter plot, click on the first option within scatter plot, and there it is. I'm going to insert that graph. And when I scroll back up to the top of the page, there's my graph. I'll move it over here to create a little bit of space, but there it is. This data looks good. Remember what I said yesterday? You should have a VI that looks like this and a VF that looks like this. Now, we've got some data before I should have started collecting. Vlad and his partners pressed the start button on the, on the uh, iPhone before they actually had the object moving. That's okay. We can, worry, we can delete that data. They also have some data here after the object stopped. That's okay. We can delete that data. It looks like I don't want data up to about 0.9 seconds. So let's go over here and just delete data up to 0.9 seconds. My graph looks better. It looks like I don't want data after about, about 2.4 seconds. So let's delete 
2.4 seconds and up. There's my graph, and that looks even better. Now I've got a very clear VI and a very clear VF. Notice I haven't even labeled the, my axes. Notice I haven't even labeled the title of the graph. That doesn't matter for these because you're not actually including these graphs in your write-up. This is just for getting data. Okay? Now, I can't get the slope of this line and this line on the same graph. So what I want to do is separate these. Take special note as to where that line changes. For me, it looks like it's about 1.3 seconds. So I want one line from, from 1 to 1.3 seconds, and then another line from 1.4 seconds on. Let's delete that graph. Now let's plot a new one from 1 to 1.3. Insert, chart, scatter plot, first option. There's my nice straight line graph. Now I'm going to customize that by scrolling down and including a linear trend line. Scrolling down a little bit further and labeling it with the equation. If I insert this graph now, you can see that my VI is 0 0.806 meters per second, the slope of the graph. I can go back into my, my document and record that now as my initial velocity. My initial velocity of car 1, 0 0.806 meters per second. Now let's go back to my spreadsheet, plot a new graph of 1.4 seconds and up. Highlight that data. Insert a chart. But remember, I don't want a bar graph. I want a scatter plot. First option. Customize it with a linear trend line and label it with the equation. We can see for VF for this trial, my velocity for VF is 0 0.339. I can include this now in my table, 0 0.339 meters per second for my final velocity. You're going to repeat that for every trial. Now you can see on the podcast up here in the top right hand corner, you can see that this has taken 12 minutes and 43 seconds. This will not take 12 minutes for every trial. This has taken 12 minutes, A, for the first trial that we've done, and B, for me to explain it to you. If you do a couple of them, and it takes you three or four or five minutes for each one, once you've finished a couple of them, the third, the fourth, the fifth one, they're going to go like that. They're going to go so quickly because you're just repeating the same thing. Does that make sense? Once you fill in this table, you're going to plot one more graph. So you're going to create one more spreadsheet with this data in it and plot one new graph, this time labeling your axes, labeling your title, uh, finding the slope of the graph, and doing the analysis that I told you about yesterday. All right. I'm going to show you one more quick thing. How do we plot the graph that we actually include in our write-up? Remember, in our write-up right now, all we have is data. Let's pretend our data is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's pretend our y-axis data is 0.5, 1, uh, 1.5, 2, and 2.5. Okay, That's not your real data, but let's pretend after we go through the analysis that we've just gone through, this is the data that I get. How do I graph this now to include that graph under the analysis for my lab write-up? Well, let's create another spreadsheet. I'm going to rename this spreadsheet, if I click on it here, I'm going to rename this spreadsheet um, Final Graph. Again, just so that when I have 
seven or eight or nine spreadsheets with graphs, I'm able to determine which one is which. My final graph will have VF and V, uh, sorry, VI, I should say, and VF. My data was one, two, three, four, five, and 0.5, uh, 1, 1 1.5, 2, and 2.5. You're going to plot this graph the same way as you plotted your last graph. You just have to do a little bit more with it. Highlight it. Insert a chart. We don't want a bar graph. We want a scatter plot. We want the first option. There's my graph. Now it's going to customize. Let's change the title to final velocity versus initial velocity. Let's scroll down a little bit further and label our horizontal axis, which will be initial velocity. in meters per second. Let's label my vertical axis, which will be final velocity in meters per second. Now let's scroll down further, add a linear trend line, and label it with the equation. This is the graph that I would, would insert into my document. Click on it, go Control C for copy, go back to my document, Control V for paste. That's not what I wanted. Control C for copy, and then Control V for paste. And it's the same thing. We've got it copied. Go into our analysis, click paste, and there we go. There is your analysis graph. Now, your table, which is comes from 10 different graphs, and then your final graph, the only one that you actually have to include in this write-up, final velocity versus initial velocity, with the equation displayed so that we can determine what the slope means and then do the analysis that was on uh, the podcast yesterday.